Glory. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, please. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength, and in his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. Because we have a choice, we not only rejoice, but we repent. Amen? Amen. See, we have a choice to repent. Believe me, the more you repent, the more rejoice you have. Amen. It's when you hold on to those things and justify reason, then you're erring on the wrong thing. You always err on the area of repent. Turn away. Amen? Because we have the power to choose. Everyone say, I have the power to choose. Power to choose. So no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your trial is, no matter what your season is, you still have the power to choose. But there is a guideline to get us through certain things, isn't there? Amen? In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, would you read it with me? To everything there's a what? A season. Come on, read it. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, and a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, and a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. These are seasons that we go through. These times are seasons. And in between seasons, there's what we call transitional periods everyone say transitional period now a transitional period is actually a season in itself but before you when you come out of a season you enter a transitional period before you enter your next season does everybody understand that does anybody understand that that's good <laughs> in first peter chapter 5 Transitional period. All glory. First Peter chapter five. Hallelujah. And of course, verse five. And we will read this together, please. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders or those who, in other words, it's not about age in this, elders. It's about those who are more mature. Yes, all of you become submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility, humbleness. For God resists the what? The proud. But he gives grace to the Humble. So there's a place where you and I must come into a state of humbleness no matter what. Humbleness means you're not first. You're not first. You're thinking of kingdom first and others first before yourself. Amen. So you maintain a sense of humbleness. Humbleness means you're willing to deny yourself and submit to God. Deny yourself and submit to God. See, if you can't deny yourself and submit to God, then you can't be humble. You're prideful. Amen. So in this arena where we go through transitional periods, we've got to come to a place of maintaining a state of humility. 
Therefore, it says in verse 6, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, that he may bring you through the tra transitional period into your next season. He says, cash your cares upon him for he cares for you. Listen, there's something that happens in this, trans in this transitional period. Sometimes you don't know what the heck's going on. You lack understanding and vision. You just don't know what. And that's how it's supposed to be. Why? Because he wants to get you to a place where you are humble, where you can trust him, where you can rest in him, and where you can wait on him. Does everybody got it? I'm going to say it again. Where you are humble, where you can what? Trust in him, where you can rest in him, and you wait on him. On him. Now, during this period, I'm going to tell you, the enemy comes full blown. Amen. Amen. Every time you're at an end of it, where you're starting something new. In other words, when somebody first comes into total freedom, believe me, you just entered the transitional period. Amen. 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 When you start a new job, when you get married. When you get divorced. Does everybody understand it? There's that area that every time we go through a season, then in between seasons, we come into a specific season called transitional period where you just don't know what the heck is going on. Right. Okay, now look at verse 8. So in this, we need to, everything that tries to come up, we need to unload. Don't try and figure it out. Because it will take you off course. Amen. You must unload it until you enter your next season. Does everybody get it? Amen. It says be sober, which means what? Alert. Now, this is not alert. Uh, this is an alertness of being alert of the enemy's tactics. Be vigilant, which means consistent. So you must maintain your routine. You must maintain to be disciplined during this period. You cannot allow emotional decisions to affect you. You cannot allow anything to affect you because the enemy will try to do everything he can through your children, through family events, through jobs, through tragedies, through whatever. He'll try to get you to lose focus and sway another direction. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. In other words, roaring means voice. Whoa! Let me tell you, every voice of hell comes out when you enter this period. Amen. They're all trying to tell you what to do. It's like you stepped on a, a button that released every voice. All of a sudden, it's the attack of the voices, right? That's what he means by roaring lion. Seeking whom he can distract so he can move out. But it says resist him. Steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings. Oh, there we go again. Sufferings. Listen, sufferings are always about kingdom business. Sufferings. Sufferings is, you know, people always think of sufferings as loss. Or losing things or whatever. There's an area of sufferings where we go through emotional sufferings. Where we're interceding and we're, we know somebody's going on a wrong path. And there's a suffering. Especially when we're on the wrong path ourselves. Amen. Or we know that somebody is in distress or mourning or deceived. Deception. When you know that something's like this, you go through a suffering for them. There's a groaning within you. So resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, after you've gone through this period of transitional period, that you can be perfected, that he can establish you, strengthen you, and then settle you so you're no longer moved. So that you're what? No longer moved. So that when you go into the next transitional period, you're not easily manipulated. 
I got to share with you that in the kingdom, again, it's kingdom business. It's not personal business. It's never personal. It's kingdom. That's why the Lord corrects, counsels, chastens those he loves. Amen? Why? Because it's kingdom business, not personal business. And people must move out of that arena because personal business means religious. This is kingdom business. This is a military operation. Either you're accepted or you reject it. And when you reject it, you reap it. So everybody got it. Hallelujah. Okay. So there's a place where he wants to get us to where we maintain our humbleness, where we can trust, where we can rest, and we can wait. And when we reach these places, and we go through this period, he will exalt you. In other words, he will bring you into your next season. Why? Because he wants to bless you in the next season. There's something he's trying to get to you. But what you do in this transitional period can alter your destiny. And we've been talking about some of this. It can alter your destiny, what you do. Why? What you touch, what you agree with. It can alter your destiny. Amen? Amen. So he wants to bless you in the next season, in this transitional period. It's what we call no man's land. No man's land. No direction or understanding. <laughs> the enemy comes... Now, I'm going to tell you this. The enemy comes with the most ungodly counsel, but it sounds like godly counsel. Why? Because every voice wants to counsel you. Man, I know what you're going through. Oh, get behind me. So you must be careful and what, what voice you lean to. Psalm 1. And I just don't understand it. Good. There's times when God is not trying to get you understanding. He's trying to get you to trust him. Oh, yeah. See, when you fall in the arena of trust, rest, and wait, understanding will come. But if you're trying to get understanding before you can humble yourself, trust, rest, and wait, it ain't coming. And you'll stay in that period. It's called no man's land. It's like the wilderness. People fall into the butt syndrome. But, 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 but. They show up with those little mopeds, right? Butt, 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 butt. Remember, a moped is a butt, butt. A rice burner is a me-me. And a Harley's a come out, come out, come out. <laughs> so every time I show up, I pull up next to a whatever. <laughs> I want to say, come out. <laughs> Actually, I don't have to say it. My bike's saying it already. Come out, come out, come out. They might they need to make one that says, repent, repent, repent. <laughs> Psalm 1, <laughs> verse 1. Blesses the man, hallelujah, that what? Walks not in the counsel of the what? Rebellious, ungodly. It's amazing how many people, when they fall into this transitional period, still look for understanding on Fleshbook, Facebook. They're looking for everybody's opinion. They, they, they contact people that they know are out of order. They communicate with the past. And let me tell you, you know what's going to happen? Nothing. It ain't going to change. You're going to stay in that no man's land longer. And you know what? The devil will bring all kinds of people from your past to 
tried to say, listen, I know what you're going through. No, they don't. Nor does he walk in the God and the counsel of the ungodly, rebellious individual. Nor stands in the path of sinners. In other words, these are individuals that are still not right. They're sinning. In fact, they approve of sin themselves. Well, let's just hang out with them for a while and get some counsel. Sinners are, are those who sit in the seats of the scornful. There are many people who are still rebellious, grumbling, and complaining. Never get counsel from a complainer. Amen. <laughs> These are voices that we need to reject. Does everybody understand that? It says, but his delight is in the law and the truth of, of the Lord. In his law or in his word, he meditates day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. In other words, he's drinking of the spirit. He brings forth its fruit in its season. It, why? In the next season, it's going to be very fruitful. Amen. Let me share something with you. In, the, in that transitional period, it's not very fruitful. <clears throat> why? Because the purpose of it is to bring you to the end of you. Yeah. Remember, we go from glory to glory. But to get to glory, you first got to die. And you must die over and 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 over. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. Why? Because God is going to build a house. If you do, it's going to wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Whoa. He's going to prosper. Whatever you do will prosper. So we're going to be rejecting the voice of ungodly counsel from those out of position. We're, listen, remove all ungodly influence. Again, grumbling, complainer, believers, especially those that are bitter, angry, regretful, but meditate on the righteousness of God. We must be careful who we follow. Amen? Amen? Especially when we're in a non-directional situation. <laughs> so, you know, when people fall into a place where there's not, they don't have the understanding yet, or there's no direction yet, they begin to grab hold of anyone or anything. They're looking for the right person to grab hold of instead of humbling themselves, trusting God, resting in God, and waiting. Because let me tell you, you'll grab hold of that one that ain't right, and you become contaminated, and you stay in that period. Or if you get through that period, your next season will not be fruitful. Is everybody okay? No man's land, man. It's normally where life lasting consequences are in effect by our decision. Does everybody understand that? Long lasting, life everlasting things, your destiny. What you make in that period of decision is affecting your destiny. Matthew 4, transitional period. Everyone has been in them, and everybody will be in them again. Amen. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4. In verse 1. Is everybody there? What does it say? Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into what? The wilderness, no man's land. To be what? 
to be tempted by the devil. Hello. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones come bread. Now listen, your identity will be challenged during this period of time. In fact, you will wonder who you are. But it has nothing to do with a sense of feeling. A sense of anything it has nothing to do with a thought or an emotion. It's a truth that you hold on to. It's an area of disciplined. It's disciplined. It's a place of disciplined. I'm di you be disciplined of who I am. I'm disciplined and not to be moved. I'm disciplined to wait and make no move or decision until I know that I know that I know that I know that it's God. And too many people assume. They go by their emotions. Oh, this is the one. Oh, that's the car. Or that's the person. Or that's this. <sighs> then they give their hearts to it. And it actually gets contaminated. Because a heart's not to be given to anything or anyone but him. Then they put their hope in it instead of their hope in him. Does everybody understand that? And it becomes contaminated. And let me tell you, when you get through that period, your next season will not be fruitful. Because we're supposed to be more fruitful, aren't we? We're supposed to be bearing more fruit. Is everybody okay? Even Jesus entered. He went into the transitional period, didn't he? It was called the wilderness. No man's land. Amen? And then when he came out of it, he entered a what? New season. Look at all the things that happened to Jesus when he came out. See, anything that you give your heart to before God's time will cause you to become contaminated. Oh, man, I, I pray we get this. Because God wants to get us to the next season blessed, prosperous. But you got to get through the transitional period first. James chapter 1. Oh, glory. How many of y'all know God's a jealous God? How quickly we forget. Hallelujah. What's the matter? Anybody hot in here? Praise God. Sheesh kebab. James chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. And now you're going to get more understanding of this verse. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Hello. When you fall into transitional periods. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience or what you call endurance. How many of y'all know we need to have endurance? Yeah. Endurance is to burn through that period. In other words, that's, endurance is going to take discipline. They walk hand in hand. Because if you're not disciplined during this period of time, you know what you'll do? You'll run. Amen. And you'll take your demons with you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let patience have its what? Let the endurance have its... Per let this... Let me tell you something. This transitional period is going to perfect certain things in you. If you let it. That you may be perfect, complete, and lacking what? Nothing. 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 It's amazing in how many people run from it, alter it, jump around it, or run through it. And then they get to the next season. Whoa, I'm in a new season. And it's deader than a doornail. And it's not fruitful. And they struggle in that next season. Because they did not allow God to deal and do, do with them in a transitional period. I'm going to share again. When you give your heart to anything before God's time, 
Remember, it's his. We give our heart to nothing but him. No one, no thing but him. It's amazing. And how many people give their hearts away and they fall. And let me tell you something. Falling, it says falling from the faith means falling from position. It doesn't mean that they go out and use drugs again or fornicate or they fall out of place, out of that position, that divine order, that divine place of relationship. It's a beautiful place where there's a constant contact all the time, where there's peace, joy, there's no confusion, there's no frustration. There's a knowing that you know, that you know, that you know, and there's no doubt. None. Is everybody okay? Verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. In other words, you know that he's going to provide everything you need. So you've entered a place of humbleness, trust, rest, and waiting on the next command or understanding. You're not asking for anything more because you know he's already got it. You don't need to ask. Oh, Lord, you, you know I need this. Well, wait a minute. I just said I know you know. So what am I asking for? Amen. See, now we got to allow God to build the house and not us. So that's all he wants is you during this period, nothing else. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that per man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And what? Unstable in all his ways. And what's going to happen? Is he earning the trust of God or losing it? Losing it. Does everybody get this? During this period of time, it's vitally important. It can set your destiny or it can hurt it. Amen? Amen. We must maintain during this period of time an attitude of gratitude, not looking at what you had and not <laughs> looking at what you need. but it's looking at who you are in Christ. That's that. That's what you're holding on to. I'm in Christ. I'm a new creation. I can't allow my ID to slip from me. I must stand on who I am in Christ. I stand on who I am in Christ. I stand on who I am in Christ. No matter how I feel, no matter what's going on, even though this isn't working, that's not working, nothing's working, I don't have any understanding, I don't have any direction, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. Because I've entered no man's land. Transitional period to a new season. Philippians chapter 3. All glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Philippians chapter 3. And it's chapter 4. I knew you lied to me, you. Philippians 4. Oh, wait a minute. Snap it. It is Philippians 3. Sorry. Verse 7. Philippians 3, 7. Is anybody there yet? Aren't you glad we're not religious? Would you read this with me? But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Hello. These things that have lost everything. I mean, come on. Listen, everybody loses everything. But it doesn't matter how much you lost. The problem that happens here is because 
when, when you enter a new season or you enter this transitional period, when you come out of a new season, you enter a transitional period, people are still looking at what they've lost. They're still looking at what they lost. They still remember the lost material, the lost relationships, the lost this, the lost that. And they, the problem is, is they lose what they've gained. They lost what they've gained, and they're still looking at what they've lost. And it puts a person in a state of contamination. All right, let's read this. In verse 8. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the what? Excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered, there we go again, the loss of all things, and count them as what? Rubbish. Rubbish. That I may gain Christ. It's amazing because what happens is when you go into a new season, you go into the transitional period, you may lose some things. In fact, God knows what becomes an idol to you. It is a time where idols are crushed. It's a time where idols are removed. And it's a time where your heart gets reset and exchanged heart to heart. If you, he will not force you, he will offer it to you. He will offer it to you. And if you're not willing to, you will enter next season unfruitful. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, everyone say know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So understand, he was looking in this area that he had just come through and entered a season where he had to maintain the arena of an attitude of gratitude and gratefulness of what he had gained, not looking at what he lost. Too many people look at what they've lost. Amen. They look at what they've lost. Oh, man. And you know what the devil does to come during this? It's, again, to see a take of the voices. Man, don't you remember what you had? Gosh. Man, you could, you could go back out there and do the same old thing and have these things. He never reminds you of the torment, the fear, the pain, the separation, the, the fears, and the lack. And the struggle of always maintaining what you had. I mean, we had maintained what we had then, always. Never an area of humility, rest, Trust, wait. Is everybody okay? So in this, we've got to maintain an attitude of gratitude. Amen? We've got to count all things lost for Christ. Sufferings is one of the principles of kingdom living. If you're not willing to suffer, you ain't living right. We've got to get to a place where we're willing to cut loose from the past worldly possessions for Christ and allow him to build the house. This is a period. <laughs> it's a true test. It's a test of faith and trust. Listen, there, God wants to get us through here. And this is how we begin to get through it. But there's a process of getting through it, and that's being willing to allow him to change us. Remember, we go from glory to glory. None of us has never made it. We're always going in this period from season to transitional period to become more like him. We come in this area because we, in that transitional, in the this, in this season of blessings and knowledge and wisdom and all the other things, we become prideful and don't even know it. We become in an area where we become more confident in ourselves because of what we know. In any area of distance of lack of trusting and leaning on him will cause you, it becomes exposed. Does everybody understand it? And let me tell you this, that 
it also brings us back into the transitional period quicker. You'll go from season, all of a sudden you go back in a transitional period, and you're wondering, what the heck just happened in that season? Well, you just entered another transitional period. It seems like sometimes we just never get out of them because we keep refusing or rejecting or doing the same thing over and over and over, not let go of it. Is everybody okay? Again, some of these things are uh, would put us uh, during this period of time in this transitional period. It could be because of a loss of loved one, new job, new place, whatever. It's the beginning of something new. God is preparing you for a new season. Amen. Amen. And again, we must be careful the voice you place as valuable. You must be careful. Remember, many have the form of godliness, but no understanding. And again, what you do in this period will affect your destiny. Psalm 40, is everybody okay? Psalm 40, verse 1. Hallelujah. Training for reigning. Thank you, Lord. Verse 1, would you read it with me, please? I waited what? Oh, snap. I what? I waited patiently for the Lord. Whoa, I didn't make any decisions. I didn't try and get any understanding. I waited. Does everybody get That's what he's saying. I waited for him to come and get me. I waited for him to release to me. I didn't ask for nothing. I didn't look for nothing. I waited on him. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me. Hallelujah. And he what? He heard my cry. He heard my heart. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit. <laughs> Called a transitional period. <laughs> out of the murray clay. And set my feet upon a what? Rock. And established my steps. He did it. He set my feet on the rock and established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth. Oh, glory. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blesses that man who makes the Lord his trust. Hallelujah. And does not respect the proud. In other words, he doesn't agree with prideful. He does not approve of deception. Nor such as turn aside to lies. He doesn't like lying at all. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, there are more than can be numbered. He waited. He endured. He waited for God to speak. Nothing else. Did not ask. Did not waited, 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 endured. Does everybody get that? He says, blesses that man who trusts. Why? Because you trust him. Let me share something with you now. He said, and he put a new song in his mouth. Remember, we were singing that song. song of, he give, gives us a song of deliverance, doesn't he? Psalm 34. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. Now, mm -hmm. verse 1, I will what? Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise is a weapon that quiets your enemy. Amen? It quiets our enemy. It immobilizes him. It keeps him at a distance and turns down the volume. I'm going to say that again. It quiets our enemies. It mobilizes them. Keeps them at a distance. And turns down the volume of the voices. And this is what will assist you. To go through the transitional period. Into your new season. See, so many people are trying to battle in that area. That's what I need to do is start praising. In verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked at him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who what? Trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who what? Fear him, reverence him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Wow. Psalm 119. So we need to praise through. Without praise, there's limitations placed. A person that's a weak praise and worshiper has got limitations. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 103. Because the more a person prays and worship, the stronger they become. But you still have a free will, don't you? No matter what. Because, you know, there's that area where you can still choose to fulfill your soul or your flesh. Instead of um, a listening to the Holy Spirit. Psalm 103, or 119, verse 103, let's speak it together. How sweet are your words to, my, to taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get what? Understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Except I pray the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, to teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand. I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Why? Because he continued to praise and to speak the word of God. Continue to praise and speak the word of God. He wasn't looking for anything else. Does everybody understand that? It will be released. Is everybody all right? Listen, by winning our atmosphere, we begin to influence our environment. We maintain the promise of his word. Look at it. As we begin to praise, we continue to praise, we continue to speak his word, eventually what begins to happen is we get closer to coming out of the transitional period. Amen? And then direction and understanding come. 
It doesn't come in fullness. It comes. And it, what you'll find then when that becomes, because when you begin to enter a new season, there's an energetic energy that comes. It's like, whoa. But if you enter a new season and it ain't there, it's because you didn't do what you're supposed to do in a transitional period. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we didn't take heed of the warnings God gave. Again, by winning our atmosphere, we begin to influence our environment. Amen? What does the word say? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Psalm 143. Psalm 143. Verse 7. Psalm 143, verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Answer me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me. Everyone say, cause me. To hear your loving kindness in the morning. Let me tell you, God wants to hear that. Cause me. Whatever you got to do, cause me. I know I don't have the understanding. I know I don't have the direction. I'm in no man's land, but cause me to know what I'm supposed to do. Cause me to wait on you. Cause me to trust you. Cause me to shut my mouth. Cause me to turn off the voices. Cause me to praise you. Cause me to speak your word. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. For I lift up my soul to you. Cause me. That's where you must admit that he is the only way. He's the only way out of transitional period to a new season. He is the only way. See, he wants to get get us to a place where he is truly everything. In other words, people are willing to take risks and chances for the things of the world. You know, think about that. They're willing to take risks and chances for the things of this world and tangle themselves up in the fears of this world, but not willing to take risks or chances with him. They're willing to lose everything to gain something in the world, but they're not willing to lose themselves to gain everything with him. Philippians 4. All oh, glory. So do you think he wants us to get to a place where nothing matters here? Yeah. Amen. The only thing that matters is what matters to him. 4-4, four, four, what does it say? Rejoice in the Lord when I feel like it. Rejoice in the Lord. When, Vanessa? Rejoice in the Lord. When? Always. Praise God, you made a teaching. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And let your what? Gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is where? He's at hand. Now, gentleness is an area where you, there is trust, rest, and wait. Be anxious for everything. <laughs> Be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. So we're to be anxious for nothing. We're to be led 
and allow him to build as you come out of the old into the new. Even in the area of transitional period, you're still exchanging old for new. It doesn't stop. 1 Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Good warfare. Good warfare. Well, how do you warfare? You praise and worship. You decree the word of the Lord. You bind loose. You don't stop. Amen. Having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. Of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to who? Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme, lie, cheat, or betray. Sometimes you just got to turn them over to Satan. Does everybody get it? That's what he did. Just turn them over and allow the course to run. We're to wage a good warfare. We're to fight with eternal words, with the sword of the Spirit. And if you're not willing to fight, change, turn from it, you'll run into Satan's deception. Amen? Why? Because you must be careful during this period of time of counterfeit. Counterfeit will come quickly. Counterfeit. Familiar spirits are counterfeit, the counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. You'll be pressed with thinking that this is the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all know that God would rather have you wait to make a decision? Even if it's God and you're uncertain, he'd rather have you wait. Does everybody understand that? And then he'll, oh, that was you, Lord. But see, he'll honor that you didn't know and you didn't do anything. Amen. Gosh, Lord, I don't know if this is you or not. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to wait. Good. Amen. Why? Because then you're walking in assumption. Unless you know, then you know. But you better make sure it's him. Amen. And remember, God never interrupts himself, does he? So then anything that interrupts itself ain't God. Amen? Amen. And it ain't going to work, is it? There's always that trouble. There's always that stuff. How many all know the word says all things work to the good? Well, who wants to work it to the good? You know why it has to work to the good? Because people did it out of God's time. Amen. Then they got to work it. When God does it, you ain't got to work it. You just flow with it. Then people spend more time trying to work it instead of serving God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Galatians 6. Transitional period. It's a pretty intense place. Amen. So you're going to fight through it you're going to deny yourself. You're going to get humbled. You're going to trust, rest, and wait. Or you're going to run. And you're going to run right in the hands of the devil, guaranteed. Oh, hallelujah. We got a teaching called what? Fight or run? Galatians 6, verse 7. Here we go. Are you ready? Galatians 6, verse 7. Now, you may think that he's speaking directly to you, and he is. <laughs> Man, he knows my stuff. I mean, he just exposed your laundry. You didn't think he knew? How dumb can we be and still breathe? Galatians 6, verse 7. Do not be what? Deceive. God isn't mocked. He will not mock, get mocked. For whatever man sows that he will want, also reap. 
For he who sows to his flesh will the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing what's right. Amen. For in due season, we will, when we get to the new season, when we get into that next season, we're going to reap if we don't lose heart. In other words, if we don't play games with God. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. So, what are you going to sow? Are you going to sow time? Amen? You sow what you speak, your praise and worship. You sow, you sow in labor. People sow in money and finances and possessions, etc. Why? Because you know that sowing is movement. And movement is faith. Sowing, whatever it is, praise. That's why he says, let praise be continued on your mouth. You're constantly sowing then. It's, it's bringing you through. When you get, become stagnant, that's when the bugs gather together, you know what I'm saying? That's when the water begins to turn green. And it's not antibiotic. Those are swamp creatures known as demons. The voices come from everywhere. They want to slow you down and stop you. From what? Sowing. 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 They want to prevent you from fellowship. They want to prevent you from speaking the word. They want to prevent you from denying yourself. But they want to get you in a place of worry, anxiety, stress. Why? Because you can't become humble. Amen? You can't get into a place of rest, trust, and you can't wait. Is everybody okay? Yep. So, so sowing actually begins to unlock your destiny for your next season. Ezekiel 36, and we'll close here. Ezekiel 36. So count it all joy as you enter the transitional period. Now, every trial and tribulation doesn't mean you're in a transitional period. Does everybody get it? Okay. But depending on how you handle it can put you in it. How you handle temptation can put you in it. In other words, you could be earning the trust of God and all of a sudden be tempted and do something stupid. And God will put you right in the transitional period as a place of chastening, counsel, correction, direction, and waiting. He can put you right in there and not answer you for a little bit. But I can tell you every voice from hell will come. Every emotional thing, everything. You'll start thinking about all kinds of other things. Spirits of oppression, spirits of discouragement, all of these things. God's waiting for you to be disciplined. Amen. What's the matter? Did you forget everything you were taught? Did you just throw it all away? Well, oh, maybe we need to just put you in the fire a little bit longer. Well, then you'll use something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ezekiel 36, 23. Is everybody there? What does he say? And I will sanctify my great name. Yes, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes, when I am honored in you, when I am everything in you, and the world is out of you. Remember, the Jews went into the wilderness after they came out of Egypt to get Egypt out of them. They went in no man's land. And you know what? They grumbled and complained in a transitional period. Remember, they were in a transitional period waiting to get to the promised land. And only two made it out of millions. 
because no one, there was only two of them out of the original that were willing to deny themselves. That were willing to allow God to be glorified in them. Amen? Amen. Glory. Verse 24. I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Hello, that's the United States. Every one of us has come from another nation. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your what? Idols. <laughs> Those things you've given your heart to. And I will give you a what? New heart and a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and what? Cause you. Cause you to walk in my statutes by counsel, correction, direction, and conviction. I will cause you. And of course, then when none of that's working, he'll put you in the transitional period. It's like time out. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a simple word. Holy Ghost time out, you know. <laughs> Transitional period. <laughs> and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and what? And what? And do them. Then you shall dwell in the land. Then you will get to the next season that I gave to your fathers, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. In other words, you won't lack nothing. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Come on, man. So welcome the time out. Amen. Amen. Amen? Welcome it. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what's right before God. Deny ourselves. Continue to praise. Continue to speak the word. Continue to submit. Continue to die. But do it with all of your heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. And whatever you've given your heart to, take it back and give back to him. Because it's become an idol. So that you can enter the next season with fruitfulness. With blessings. Or you enter the next season the same way you came out. At a transitional period. God will keep you in time out as long as he needs to. And he even pull you out and use you. And then put you back in. Hello? Because he's God. And he loves us unconditionally. So it's a good day to die, isn't it? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for everything tonight, Lord. And this, the revelation and impartation that you have placed in us, Father. We thank you for those times of Job seasons and all the other seasons that we've gone through. For the prosperity season, for the loving season, for revelation seasons. But we also thank you for transitional seasons. And I pray, Father, that the word that was imparted in here tonight be protected by the blood of Jesus and grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that we will be totally submissive during this transitional period and enter our new season with fruitfulness, peace, joy, righteousness, more trust, more faith, and more favor in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed.